Hey guys, so let's continue our discussion on tensors. So, this is Sir DV uh, discussing to you uh, some basic, still some uh, concepts, uh, very basic concepts on uh, initial notations and tensors. Okay. So let's define what is a tensor. So a tensor, just like a vector, is actually a directed quantity. Okay. So uh, it's just an extension of uh, how vectors are are uh, represented in space with the uh, directions. Okay, so it's, it means to say that tensors are uh, are capable of uh, are representing even uh, those uh, which extends beyond uh, the spatial dimension okay so what we only know is uh, uh, one dimension two dimension three dimensional space uh, but uh, we have uh, other quantities of interest that will add up to the to the uh, a complicated uh, principles of mechanics, no? So involving time as another quantity of uh, of interest, uh, involving cost, involving uh, uh, methodologies, etc. We we have heard, no? A lot of uh, a lot of uh, of applications now uh, using even uh, the beyond no? the, the spatial dimension of three three dimensional uh, uh, quantities no? so we have the 4d the 5d the 6d and maybe the 7d okay so uh, we're, we're cost uh, quant uh, quantities time uh, uh, variables methods etc are actually placed okay in line with the, the spatial dimensions so here uh, tensors can actually be of help no to facilitate the the uh, representation of all uh, these variables mathematical and uh, uh, engineering variables uh, at that okay so the rank and order of a tensor is simply the number of components uh, which of course is based on its range or dimension so if we have a three-dimensional range or space your your uh, base no will be three okay therefore in our usual uh, spatial uh, uh, problems forces in space etc we take note that uh, the zeroth order tensor has only one component so 3 raised to 0 is simply 1 and you call this a scalar or a constant and if I have a first order tensor 3 to 1 is 3 you have a vector if I have a second order tensor 3 squared you have a matrix and if I have a third order tensor 3 cubed I have a cubic matrix or a cubic etc no? so you can uh, change no, the, the base in terms of the range or dimension. Maybe 4 to the 0 is still 1, 4 to the 1 is 4, etc. So if you want to check the, your number of components easily or the number of terms, or you just uh, go back to this basic uh, criteria and uh, you will not be lost, no? especially when doing some, some programs, some computational uh, procedures, etc. So an example of a tensor we are very familiar of are this. No? So a vector is a tensor. Scalar is also a tensor of order zero. So k is a constant. Let's say coefficient of uh, permeability is a scalar coefficient. Fi is a force vector. It's order one. Okay. So take a look. Uh, the, this, since there is no subscript, this is no subscript, meaning to say it's a zero order. You have one subscript, this is the first order, one subscript of first order, and two subscript, you have a second order. Okay, so this is a 
a scalar, a vector, a vector, and a matrix. If you want to use the, the vectorial notation. Okay, if you are the, if you want to express it in terms of tensorial notations, this is a zero order, first order, and second order. So that's the way on how to address the tensorial quantities. So special tensors uh, are also defined here, and the first one I'd like to to uh, share to you is the very useful Kronecker delta delta j or simply the identity tensor okay so sometimes this chronic delta is called the identity uh, tensor or matrix now if you want to use the term matrix so a, a, an identity matrix is simply a substitution operator because anything that you multiply with an identity uh, is simply the same okay matrix so it simply substitutes uh, uh, one form of an expression to the another form, but still uh, of the same qu quantity and maybe of a different uh, form only. Okay, so that's uh, how the Kronecker delta or the identity tensor is used in tensorial mechanics. So the property of this course in a three-dimensional space is uh, this is a three by three matrix the diagonal elements which is equivalent to one and the off diagonal elements equivalent to zero which is defined on the basis of this okay definition that uh, delta ij is equal to one when i is equal to j and delta ij is equal to zero when i is not equal to j or in matrix form the conical delta is simply represented by this matrix okay where in this diagonal are simply identity or one and the off diagonal are simply zero okay so let's use the this uh, special tensor in proving that uh, uh, aj multiplied by delta ij is simply equal to ai Okay, so meaning to say the subscript does not change the value of this, but it only changes it from one form to the other. So let i is equal to 1. We now use what you call an iteration. The easiest way to, to uh, expand. No? So we are trying to make this an explicit notation. So iteration, iterate on i. First, we count our range. Uh, i equals to 1, let i equals to 1, therefore aj delta 1j, we change i to 1, okay? So that i there becomes 1 there. So this implies the summation because of a repeated index j. So there's a repetition of an index here, jj, so this means that we are going to use a summation operation. Okay, so when we go to the J now, this is a 1, 2, 3 iteration. We have to sum it when J equals 1, J equals 2, and J equals 3. So we simply make use of A, J equals 1, A1, delta 1, 1. So this is your first term. Okay, and then an A2, delta 1, 2, this is your second term. So I'm iterating it now to 2. So this is... Uh, j equals 1, this j equals 2, and this is j equals 3. And using the definition of a delta ij here, wherein all the off diagonal elements are 0, then a1, delta 1, 1 will only be the one that is having a value. Okay? So the rest are all zeros, therefore. Uh, this cancels and this becomes zero and for i equals two you simply uh, do the same and you take note that the one that is have only a value here is this so this becomes oh uh, sorry okay it's one it's like this one so everything here is zero 
so everything here is 0 therefore this is a2 okay so this a1 and this a2 and the last okay when i is equal to 3 everything here is 1 but everything here is 0 so this becomes a3 a3 times 1 is a3 and then of course since this is a uh, summation oh, sorry this is a, a free index i is a free index here so this is now a free index so remember rule number uh, I think this rule number uh, 3 or 4 so a free index must always appear in each expression so i and i appears and this will define what this will define the order of your tensor which is order one okay so this is the first order tensor hence this is what this is a vector so if this is a vector you have must have three quantities or three elements in which this is a1 a2 and a3 and this a1 a2 and a3 simply represents a vector a or ai therefore aj delta ij is simply the same as ai so the above procedure is made simpler because this procedure is uh, here to explain to you how it is done in a, in, in a detailed manner but if we use rule number five using substitution and contraction we can simply solve this problem by one step so the rule number five states that the product of two tensorial quantities may be simplified by substitution with another tensor of a rank order equivalent to the number of free indices and we call that the method of substitution and contraction so what we did here is we simply contract the jj term there noting that this is a summation a series then the delta i there is simply equal to an identity matrix so you have to carry this free index to be the subscript of whatever um, uh, tensorial quantity you have but since we know that any any tensor multiplied by an identity tensor is simply the same tensor we simply make use of the same variable a such that aj delta ij is equal to ai so you can use this simple procedure without doing this detailed procedure next time so in the above example the substitution tensor is an identity matrix Hence, the original vector AJ does not change since AJ and AI simply uses a dummy repeated index. Okay, so same is true with the next uh, tensor we are going to discuss, the permutation tensor, which is uh, the epsilon tensor. E, uh, epsilon ijk so uh, if the chronicler delta is a substitution operator an identity operator uh, an epsilon ijk is simply a determinant operator and the definition of uh, an epsilon ijk is given here to be equivalent to 1 negative 1 and 0 if the following conditions are met okay so when ijk is an even permutation when ijk is an odd permutation it's negative and uh, when ijk repeats itself in a term then it's zero okay so you can think of uh, an ijk as a as a, as a consecutive uh, uh, range of numbers one to three no where in your permutation the clockwise permutation uh representing one two three two three one and uh, three one two is what you call the even permutation 
Okay, so when I say Okay, when I say uh, epsilon uh, 1, 2, 3, epsilon 2, 3, 1, and epsilon 3, 1, 2, these are all even permutation. So it's a clockwise. So when I say a 1, 3, 2, and a 3, 2, 1, and a 2, 1, 3, so these are all odd permutation and if I happen to have a repeated index then it is equivalent to zero so what are the permutations permutations are simply uh, groups no or associations okay so let's take a look at here if I make a cubic representation of such an epsilon uh, IJK tensor, then I can make a counter. Okay, so this is epsilon 111, epsilon 112, 113, 211, 212, 213, etc. No? So if I'm going to look at all the or cancel all the zero values here, I just look those which has a repeated term. So this becomes all zeros. Okay, there's a repeated term, repeated term, there's a repeated term, and there's a repeated term. So, ito lang ang merong walang repeated term dito. Okay? That's why this will be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, negative 1 because 2, 1, 3 belongs to the odd permutation. And this is positive 1, 3, 1, 2. So, if I can uh, do the same in the second uh, uh, column, so this is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So what has a value here is this. 1, 2, 3 is a positive from, uh, or an even permutation which is positive. Negative or odd permutation. Okay. So again here we can cancel this, cancel this, cancel this. And also cancel this uh, and this. So we have here. A negative 1, 1, 3, 2 add permutation and a positive 2, 3, 1 permutation. So this is the equivalent of what the definition here is all about. So I'd like to use this uh, permutation uh, a tensor or the determinant a tensor uh, in this problem wherein I will find the moment of a force Fi about the point yj from the origin, okay? So remember the simple problem we do in our basic uh, mechanics wherein I have here an axis, okay? Then I have a force uh, which is uh, directed maybe at this point, Okay, so this uh, value here is the this location of the point, where in this point it happens to be, uh, let's change the direction a bit uh, so that uh, we can okay, so let's uh, make use of that direction then uh, this is the point okay so let's have this point uh, let's say this is a, an x-axis let's say this is x1 x2 and x3 okay so the the uh, the distance from along the x1 is say let's drop okay so this is the okay so this is your x1 value x1 x2 and then the x3 value is 
the distance along okay along this let's say this is a One, this is x. No, this is x three. This one. Okay, so let me change now the I'll use another color here. Okay, so the distance x three. This is one. So this is distance x one is coming from here. Distance x2 is there and distance x3 is this one. Okay, so this is x1, x3, and x2. So I'd like to, to uh, get the moment of this force passing at this point x1, x2, and x3. Okay. So if you are going to make use of components and make use of, a, of a manual uh, computations using uh, directions, uh, it will be a little bit uh, confusing if you cannot draw it in a, in a uh, proportional, proportional manner or maybe an accurate manner, precise manner. But if you are going to use uh, tensorial quantities and uh, with the help of uh, programs algorithms you can be sure that uh, your quantities will arrive at a uh, very precise and very uh, accurate answer including the directions using the determinant operator okay so let us use mechanics to prove that the moment of a force as described above is given by the tensorial equation m is equal to epsilon i j k f i y j dot e k okay so this is now the the answer to the problem but we are yet to prove this by simply uh, expanding the determinant okay so how do you expand this determinant of course we we iterate okay taking moment along the direction e1 so we're just trying to iterate on the subscript k equals 1 okay when the subscript k is equal to 1 then uh, your ek here becomes e1 and your m here of course will become m1 because you are along the direction along the direction e1 so e1 is actually the unit base vector uh, a coincidental or exactly along the axis x1 and also here you have the unit vector unit vector meaning to say that the length of uh, uh, e1 e2 and e3 uh, is equal to 1 okay so this is now e3 see the only difference between x1 x2 and x3 is that x1 x2 and x3 are infinite directional vectors while e1 e2 and e3 are unit basis vectors Okay, so taking moment along uh, direction E2, so still same, and E3. So how do you now formulate the, the one inside the parentheses? Okay, you just take a look at, uh, at the definition here, that in order to have a non-trivial expression, we have to avoid repetitions of subscript and that is only true when your epsilon uh, k which is e1 e2 e3 here upon distribution will not yield to a repetition okay so if this is one uh, this cannot be one there no or else it will have a repetition this can involve another one here therefore the 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 two uh, subscript okay 
numerical subscript that is only uh, valid in this expression is 2 and 3 and we take note that 2, 3, 1 up by the definition of a permutation is a, an even permutation or positive permutation. Okay? So, 2, 3 is positive while 3, 2, 1 is negative. So, it's true with this. 3, 1, 2 is positive and 1, 3, 2 is negative. 1, 2, 3 is positive and 2, y, uh, sorry, 2, 1, 3 is negative. There can be no other quantities inside since there will be a repetition which will uh, incidentally arrive at a zero value in that regard. Okay? Now, uh, why is it called a determinant operator? Because uh, this will actually make these three values here will actually represent a solution upon defining a force, uh, moment arm, and direction as your vectors of consideration to form a determinant. Okay, so F1, F2, F3, Y1, Y2, Y3, and the direction E1, E2, E3 will give you this. Okay, so these are all positives downward, okay, and these are all negatives upward, okay. So you can uh, check, okay, by simply uh, using uh, a repeat uh, this two, you can repeat it here, or you can make use of a, a loop, no, in order to satisfy each and every expression here, okay and add them up, you will get this one here, which is exactly the same as these three individual moments. And of course, the total moment now is the sum of these three individual moments, which is still the same as this one. Now, to check the validity of your, of your uh, 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 degree or order, of your tensor, we just simply look at this IJK using contraction and I, I, J, J, K, K will all contract. Therefore, there will be no subscript remaining here, no free index. So the free index is automatically zero. So when the free index is zero, we have a scalar as your quantity. 3 to the 0 is simply a scalar quantity which is perfectly uh, uh, described in this uh, final moment M equivalent to this expression. So that finishes my lecture today uh, involving uh, basic rules and basic uh, tensors. So I'll see you on the uh, next video to discuss further no? some of the mathematical preliminaries involved in continuum mechanics. Thank you very much for listening.